touch with them. So I'll probably grade that also a B. That was managed, in my opinion, badly. Uh, the indecision, the last minute decisions haven't helped. I'll be grading that probably about an, a G. When the red wall came tumbling down last December in places like this, top of voters' priority was Brexit, most likely, education, probably not. But after a global pandemic and months of disruption to their children's learning, do voters here think Boris Johnson is still top of the class, or do they want to teach him a lesson? We spoke to a floating voter who backed the Tories this time round, and two lifelong Labour supporters who voted Tory for the first time. If there was an election tomorrow, do you think you'd vote the same way? I would, yes. I think we're doing very well. Yes. I, as, as a family, we've got no complaints. There's been a lot of disruption for schools, isn't there, lately? Yeah. How do you think this government's handled all that? They could have gone back sooner. How would you vote if there was an election tomorrow? Conservative. Boris Johnson said people like you they've lent me their yeah. votes. Would he have your vote tomorrow? They'd have my vote tomorrow, yes. It's t it, we're time for a change. Fantastic. Over the next three years, the government has promised to give schools an extra £7 billion. Oh, the challenge for Boris Johnson is to ensure that money makes a real difference to the life chances of children in places like West Bromwich. If he can do that, their parents may lend him their vote a while longer. Peter Behan, ITV News. Well, watching Boris Johnson's progress on his levelling up agenda are our Midlands MPs, of course, including those new Conservatives elected to red wall seats. Can they do better than their Labour colleagues? Our political correspondent, Alison McKenzie, has been finding out. Brendan Clark Smith became the first Conservative MP for Bassett Law in Nottinghamshire for almost a century. A former head teacher, I've put it to him. How can levelling up in education happen with so many pressures bearing down? Well, our academy's programme has been very successful that's been driven through. I give an example of Worksop in my constituency. We have a trust run in two of the schools there. They're both outstanding now. So those are real opportunities that we're giving to everybody across the board. So I think it's that focus on standards, working with the schools, and of course the technical education that we're looking at now so they can fill the jobs and hopefully fill them locally. A different view from the Birmingham Labour MP, Steve McCabe. He's been watching the trends in education over the years since being elected to Parliament in 1997. Levelling up, it's not how he sees it. The thing about these things is you have to have reliable measures. It's not enough to have the odd sound bite. So we really need to know what children are progressing, by what measures are they improving. What we actually know is there's been a great deal of confusion. Lots of children have missed schooling. Children are not back full time. Schools aren't getting the money that they were promised to make it possible for all children to come back full time. Hi, youngsters have lost a phenomenal amount of education. So, I mean, now we're talking about making up this huge gap that's developed. Uh, there's no evidence that there's anything new happening that's going to help those who are already behind level up. That's not the picture. Well, we desperately wanted our children to go back to school earlier, and it was disappointing that that didn't happen for various reasons. But the teachers, governors, heads have worked incredibly hard to get them back this September. Uh, we're putting things in place to try and help them catch up with that. My little boy started school for the first time last week, so I'm a very proud dad. And I think, like all parents, they're a little bit worried uh, to send their children. But uh, I think enough's in place there, and we're going to make sure that no student suffers. And if Labour were in power? You actually have to set targets for groups of schools so that there is something to measure in terms of the achievement of youngsters. So, you know, we know how to do this. It's a question of having the will and having the resources. Two takes on education, one chance to get it right. Alison McKenzie, ITV News, Westminster. Well, we have had a response from the government. Uh, they tell us the entire force of government continues in its commitment to building back better, levelling up our regions and all four corners of the United Kingdom. This includes, they say, schemes such as Kickstart, which will create hundreds of thousands of new, fully subsidised jobs for young people all over the country. 
Well, our political show Central Lobby is back tonight after the late news for the first time since the pandemic hit. Anne is, of course, presented by Alison. Uh, tonight, her panel of Midlands MPs will be debating how children can have a meaningful education if schools keep having to close because of COVID-19 outbreaks and whether enough funding is in place to help pupils catch up. We've got to make sure it works. Uh, we've got to make sure parents have confidence and we've got to make sure that we can avert future disasters around exams and catch up and the availability of things like laptops and so on if people have to isolate. I think that there is a lot more work to do to make sure that particularly disadvantaged students don't miss out further. And I'm not sure yet that the government's got the practicalities uh, of that. Alison, cut off in her prime, but you can hear the full uh, answer on the programme a little bit later on. Uh, now, a family-run firm in Shropshire, which has brought smiles and cuddles to...